Welcome to Mode Bespoke, I'm Martinez. For today's tutorial, I'm going to teach you a technique that will help make all of your Tunisian crochet projects a lot stretchier. So it's a really simple technique. Let's get started. So here's a small sample of, it's just a small swatch that I made using a Tunisian knit stitch. Now, for those of you that have experience with crochet and, and or, I guess, with knitting, you might have already noticed that Tunisian crochet doesn't stretch along the sides. So you get a little more stretch when you pull vertically, but horizontally, you don't have a whole lot of stretch. So why does this happen with Tunisian crochet, but not with regular crochet or with knitting? The reason has to do with your return pass. So in Tunisian crochet, we have a return pass at the end of every row. So you cast on all your stitches and then you have to take them all off of your hook by completing a return pass. So as you can see here, this is our return pass back of our fabric. Now, when you pull on the fabric, the stretch of your fabric is limited to the amount of stretch that you created on your return pass. So this is just created with a regular return pass. And as you can see, when you stretch your, um, your stitches, there we go, your stitches have been pulled to as far as they can go. So your fabric cannot and will not stretch any further. So how do we fix this so that you have very stretchy fabrics with Tunisian crochet? Well, you're gonna have to change your return pass. So here's another small sample. And I made this also using the Tunisian um, knit stitch. But with this one, I changed my return pass, which is what I'm going to be teaching you how to do today. So when you put these side by side, it's the same size, it's the same stitch. With this one, when we pulled horizontally, we didn't get a lot of stretch. We got very little stretch vertically. Now with this one, this is the altered one, you get a lot more stretch. So your stitch stretches quite a bit and you get stretch both horizontally and vertically. Now this is because we have extended our return pass. So there is more stitching and when you pull on it, your return pass can stretch a lot further because there's a lot more yarn in the stitch. So you'll be able to stretch it a lot further. So this becomes a really, really useful thing to know when you're trying to create garments. And we're gonna start working on some of these garments here um, in future projects here on the channel. So you're gonna have to be familiar with an extended return pass. So let's take a look at how to create this. Now you can use any stitch you want. For this, I'm just gonna use the knit stitch because that's what I had my the samples in at the beginning of the video. So you're just gonna begin with a slip knot and you're gonna make a chain in any length you want. So we're just gonna chain here. I'll make about maybe 10 just for the sample. There we go. And once you have a small chain or however big you want for your sample, you're gonna do your foundation row. And this is just a regular foundation row, so insert your hook into the stitch, yarn over, and pull up a loop. All right, so let's cast all of these on real quick. And once you've cast on all of your stitches, we're gonna begin with the extended return pass. Now, normally, when you work a return pass, you would start, and this is for a regular return pass. So you do yarn over, pull through one, and then for the rest of the row, you work yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, until you complete the row. So for the extended one, we need to add more space between our vertical stitches. So we need to make our return pass just a little bit wider. So when you begin with an extended return pass, you're gonna make one chain. So chain one, and then you're gonna yarn over and pull through two. And you're gonna do this for all of your stitches. So you're gonna chain one and then yarn over, pull through two. Chain one, yarn over, and pull through two. So chain one, yarn over, and pull through two. So we're adding this chain and what you're gonna notice is that the width of your work is it's going to get wider because we're adding a bit more yarn in between the stitches 
That's totally normal. That's what's going to happen. When you work your cast on, so see, it's gotten wider. It's a bit round. When you work your cast on, you're going to pull your stitches right back up. So like the sample I made at the very beginning of the video that I was showing you with, that one I used that exa exact same technique. And as you can see, it was the same size as this blue sample that, it was, that I showed you at the beginning. So you will fix all of this extra space with the cast on. So I'll show you here. So I'm going to cast on knit stitches, but again, you can use any stitch you want. So if you want to use a Tunisian simple stitches instead, you can go ahead and do that. So I'm just going to cast on all of my stitches and see everything is pulled nice and tight again. So you're right back to where you were with wise. Now we're going to work an extended return pass. So I'll talk to you more about the width here in just a moment. All right. So you begin your return pass with chain one and then you yarn over and pull through two. Chain one, yarn over and pull through two. Chain one, yarn over and pull through two. And that's it. That's all you have to do to your return pass. So that's for any of these stitches that have a just a regular or a traditional return pass. If you're using something like the ocean stitch or a lace stitch or anything that has additional um, chains already incorporated into the stitch itself. So you have to do a chain one and then you do a return pass and then chain three, return pass or anything like that. You will have to add one additional chain in order to have the extended return pass. So if your return pass calls for chain two, you're going to do chain three calls for chain four you're going to do chain five instead so you just add one chain just to make the return pass wider so now if you're wondering what's going to happen to your stitch so once you're done you've created your fabric it's still going to be wide because you would have just finished a return pass how do you get your fabric to close that's when your bind off comes in handy so let me work a few more rows here and then i'll show you what it looks like the width and i'll show you just what that bind off row will do just to bring back the shape of our fabric. So once you've worked a few rows, you're going to notice that it's not going to be, your work is not going to be as wide across the top. So your fabric is going to retain its shape and everything is just going to condense a little bit more. Just to finish off this top part, you're always going to have to do a bind off row whenever you work Tunisian crochet. So depending on what your pattern says, your bind off row will be different. So for this, I'm just going to work a single crochet bind off row. So I'm just going to cast on a knit stitch and then single crochet and then knit stitch, single crochet. And I'm just going to do this across all of the stitches along the top of my work. So this is going to start to pull together all of my stitching. So all of the stuff that we did here for the return pass, it's going to close this up so that it's not as wide and open on this last row and I'll end up with a nice neat little square for my sample. So the top part of my row will look the same as the bottom. So that's when your bind off row comes in handy. So pay attention to your pattern, see what your bind off row says to do and then just follow that. And there you go. See, you'll have a nice even work and it'll also be very, very stretchy. So now this is going to be very, very useful here when we work on garments. So whenever you make a Tunisian crochet garment, you want your fabric to be really very stretchy along all sides, so vertically and horizontally. So here on the horizontal side, we got a bit more stretch. Vertically, you've got a bit more stretch. You'll see this more the larger the piece that you work as well. So if you're working any garments, work an extended return pass. If you're working things like scarves or blankets that you don't necessarily want it to stretch too much horizontally, you can just work a regular return pass. This, for here, I'll give you a preview to the project we're going to be working on next week, which is a pair of Tunisian socks. Now for this one, I used the extended return pass. That made it so that my fabric was really stretchy. So it's really stretchy across. It's really stretchy up and down. So here's horizontally, it's nice and stretchy. And vertically, it's also really stretchy. Same applies here. So it's stretchy in this direction and stretchy in this direction. 
We're going to work next week's pattern in the round. So just a, a bit of a preview here. Make sure you have a double and a double sided hook. I'll leave links for all of this stuff down in the description box, but you'll be able to make a really, really stretchy fabric using that return pass. So any, anyway, give it a try. Try it with a variety of Tunisian stitches to see, um, just so you can get a feel for it and you can see how it's going to stretch out your work just a little bit more. So it's going to make your stitching just a little bit wider and it might change the look of your stitch a little. So let's go back to the first sample I showed you. So this is the sample for the knit stitch without the extended return pass. So this is just a regular return pass. Now this is the fabric with, I used a different number of chains too, but this is how the stitch looks with that extended return pass. So as you can see, the stitching is just a little bit wider across, but it's the easiest way to make it so that all of your stitching is, um, is a lot stretchier. Anyway, like I said, give it a try. Try with a variety of stitches, see how you like it, and then just let me know what you plan to use this in the comments below. So that was a tutorial for this week. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, hit the subscribe button. I post videos every week. If you'd like to see some of my patterns or any more of my work, you can always go check out my website. The link is down in the description box below. You can also follow me on Instagram. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, or videos, or patterns that you want to see here in the future, just leave that down in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you all again next week.